that's good news. Good to hear. Yeah, it's gone on, but <laughs> my man over there. How come we ain't thought you were a writer or a poet? Sorry. Okay, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a long gig for you, actually. So, <laughs> can everybody understand my accent first of all? Yeah, yeah. But well, as I said, my name is Terry. Uh, I'm born October sixteenth. May as well start at the beginning, Same. you know. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna inform you, okay? I'm gonna inform you. Some great Irishmen are born on our birthday, okay? It's gonna be great news to you, yeah. yeah, yeah. Same date of birth we have. As Oscar Wilde! Yeah. Yeah, well, you heard that one. <laughs> Same date of birth as Michael Collins. Yeah. And Jedward. Yeah. <laughs> one Japanese Jedward fan over the corner. <laughs> Very big in Japan, I believe, yeah. Four famous Irishmen born the same date of birth as us. Yeah, yeah. Two, four famous Irishmen, two of whom died tragically, two of whom were born tragically. <laughs> <laughs> we got there in the end, thanks for that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm from a place, I'm from Crumlin. Yeah! yeah. Could be any Crumlin fans? No, I, I live in Walker's Town. Oh, That's right. the best I can do. <laughs> Close enough. I was going to ask what post office you get your in. <laughs> <laughs> I never recognised this fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same as yours. Yeah. No, like, I come in, okay, working class area. I, I, I used to get a girl from Fox Rock actually, okay? And just in case anybody doesn't know, because everyone's whooping everything here tonight. <laughs> yeah, you're from Japan and Fox Rock, yeah? <laughs> the only Jedward fan of Fox Rock. Go, Jedward! Come on! I used to get a girl from Fox Rock, and the first time I realised a bit of a cultural divide between Crumlin and Fox Rock <laughs> was whenever she introduced me to her male friends. They're always called, Hi, Ralph, Fionn. Miha! <laughs> and my mates are called Jonjo, Marco, Deco, and Maka. <laughs> what a kind of names you come to associate the Jeremy Coyle show, I suppose. You know? <laughs> but yeah, as I said, then we work hard in Crumlin, working class area, some of us hold down two, even three jobs, and still turn up every Tuesday to collect the doll. <laughs> Dedication. You know what I mean, man? I do. I saw Conor McGregor get out of his Ferrari and collect this doll and Crumlin post office in a week. <laughs> I got pushed out and I'm like, the fuck are we, will you believe You're not sticking in the kid, we'll break your fucking mandible bone. We am the fucking dog. Hey, hey, hey. Hope you enjoy that, because Jenny doing her three McGregor impressions during the Boston Sound. Yeah, yeah, what class there, cool. Well, so my mother was quite young when she had me. In fact, my mother was actually doing a leave insert at the time. I was doing my leave insert. <laughs> That's not true, we don't have leave inserts. <laughs> I should let you know right now, I'm actually a bit of a compulsive lawyer. I'm sorry, that's not sure, whether. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. You want to see what Conor McGregor looks at 40, actually? There he is over there, look! Whoa! See a likeness. That's now me, yeah, yeah. I've been, um... People have been so, like, people saying really weird things to me lately on nights out. A couple of weeks ago, Gareth came up to me in a nightclub, right, and said to me, You look like you should have a stammer, but you don't. Go <laughs> <laughs> figure, yeah. It's another time a girl told me I look like Heath Ledger's corpse. <laughs> some of you are own, some are just trying to picture what that would look like, right now, yeah. But the, the, the person I get told I look like most of the time is even more confusing, okay? It's Nelly, the rapper. <laughs> For about the three people who seem to know who Nelly the Rapper is. <laughs> Obviously there's a few noticeable differences between me and Nelly the Rapper. You know, like, one of us, one of us. <laughs> Give up the American racist over here, yeah! Oh. Trump's America, look at that. No, no, no stips. Oh, okay, sorry about that, madam dear. Everyone's racing by you for that. No, the difference is between me and Nelly the Rapper, like one of us gets up on stage, grabbing his dick, arrogantly strutting around, exaggerating where the hood he comes from, and his beef with the police, and the other is a successful American rapper. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, for that. I was kind of, the, the deuce was taking out that joke there earlier, but a bit racist on the <laughs> Now, this is sort of, there's a guy in my local pub, right? I guess you'd call him a drunk. <laughs> and every time I go in there, he says to me, thing about you is, you're a mixed race, and you don't even know about it. Um, no, I, I'm not. No, you are. Listen to me. You're a mixed race. I'm telling you something. Your dad's not who you think he is. 
I don't have any problem with being mixed race. I just actually don't happen to be mixed race. Like, listen to me. Tell you something important. Now you are mixed race. Eventually say, Dad, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Stop trying to annoy me in the pub. <laughs> that might sound a bit surprising to you, but it's probably all the more surprised when you realise who my dad is. He's a 56-year-old racist. <laughs> As we call him in Dublin, a taxi driver. <laughs> Some of these aren't jokes, they're just the truth. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing I don't like as well about being from where I'm from, you know, is people come up to me on the street all the time. You know, people I barely know and saying, Terry, you're from Crummon, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I am, yeah. Can you get me some drugs? <laughs> <laughs> bit of a harsh stereotype, you know, I'm like, oh, Jesus, man, it's a bit of fucking, that's a bit offensive. You think that just because I'm from Crummon, I've got like a database on my phone of like white vans, a revolving door of white vans going around town delivering fucking drugs. Bit offensive, you know? Sorry, can you get me some? Well, yeah, obviously, low. <laughs> <laughs> assume. Oh, uh, another thing as well, I don't like about being from where I'm from, sounding the way I do, and all is I do a bit of acting, and I do tend to get typecast as playing a Dublin scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> a couple of people are laughing, other people are just going, Yeah, actually, that is casting for a Dublin scumbag. <laughs> for example, I had a, a small part of a TV show a couple of years ago called Rebellion. Anyone see that? Yeah, it was shit. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is going to be a big break for me, a big acting break. I'm going to have to play like a freedom fighter, like, like a Porrick Pierce or a James Connolly type. Cast director was like, well, actually, Terry, what we had in mind was you play the part of a Dublin scumbag <laughs> who, while the Fiends are all fighting against the Brits, you take advantage of the situation and break shop windows and steal <laughs> shit from shops. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Then a role in a film called Michael and Soy on Netflix. Check it out. It's a promotion. Boom. Okay, I was thinking this could be a great break for me. I'm gonna get to play like like a, like maybe when Michael goes outside the prison. I get to play a pillar of the community. I get him a job. I spot my local football team. Even introduce him to a love of his life, perhaps. Set him in straight and narrow. Actually, Terry, what we had in mind was you played the part of a Dublin scumbag <laughs> who kicks the shit out of Michael in prison and steals his remote control. <laughs> Not nice, not nice. Although I get to branch out a while ago, I got to play a scumbag from the country. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. As we call him in Crumlin, a Garda. <laughs> <laughs> One time a cast director brought me into our office, right? Really, really excited and says, Terry, you're from Crumlin, aren't you? So, yeah. I am, yeah. Are you looking to cast somebody authentic from Crumlin in a big seminal role of film coming up? No. Can you get me some drugs? <laughs> okay, 50 quid's 50 quid, isn't it? <laughs> the body, I like that down there. <laughs> I did a while ago, no, I, I, did get the branch, I did get to play a different part, okay? And the first day in the set, I was really nervous. A lot of nerves involved the first day in the film set. And the director sat me down to try and like, give me a bit of a boost, you know, reassure me. He says, Terry, I can see you're nervous. It's written all over your face. I just want to sit you down right now and reassure you you've got nothing to be nervous about because we saw some great actors in the casting room for this role. But as soon as you walked in, it was different. You weren't even acting. You just wear this man. You wear this character. Know what the role is? Convicted sex offender. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making this up. <laughs> but actually, but the film was screened, right? It was a weird one. A couple of, couple of people actually played themselves in the, in the film. And after the screen, and somebody came up to me and goes, here. Are you worried that people are going to think you're the real rapist? Go, yeah, now I am. Yeah, I'm like, that's right. Thanks for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what else is new with me? Uh, Give us a little cheer for drinking tonight. Yeah. A few people aren't drinking, barman, watch out for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that, you know. I'm <laughs> never too happy. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I sometimes go off the drink. I take little breaks in the drink because sometimes when I drink too much, I turn into a bit of a fucking idiot. <laughs> Thanks for the laugh recognition. Yeah, you can definitely see that. <laughs> for example, uh, anybody know there's like a, a new ice cream shop now in Temple Bar called Cloud Nine? And he's not his place? Yeah. 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 Well, so a couple of months ago, I was out partying hard. And I decided it'd be a great idea to climb up on top of that building, Cloud Nine, <laughs> just so I could scream out the sentence Yeah! Everybody, look at me! I am right now, literally, on 
A shitload of drugs. <laughs> that was a good life failure, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, not easy, not easy. I saw, also meet me last year, found when she finally actually left me. Her part of words really, really cruel, really cut, you know? She said to me, Terry, I just need to be with somebody who's fucking normal. <laughs> somebody who is fucking stable. I said, how dare you speak like that? I put them a crack pipe and left the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's part of the problem as well to let it down the circus. Part of the problem with drinking over here and all, I think it comes with starting drinking so young, you know? What do you drink, buddy? Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not offering to buy you one, man. I'm just <laughs> yes, please, double whiskey, sir. <laughs> what, what, what age do you start drinking at? 15. Okay. 15. I was nine. And then, um, <laughs> no, I was nine years of age, the first time my dad caught me drinking out the back garden. Drinking cider with me mates. My dad was a really strict parent. He ran out there, kicking and screaming I was, grabbed me by the ear. I was pissing my pants with fear. He dragged me into the house, sat me down at the kitchen table, put 20 cans of Guinness in front of me. And then he sat down and watched while he drank them all. <laughs> Bastard, parching. Quite surprised to find out my father handled the problem like that. But my dad is, amongst other things, a 56-year-old alcoholic. As we call him in Dublin, a taxi driver. <laughs> That's my time, everyone. Thanks so much. <laughs>